Greetings! I had the good fortune to spend a six-month sabbatical study leave at Penn State University in State College, Pennsylvania, way back in 2007. Up until this time, we had been successful growing crops with the suspended pot, non-circulating hydroponic method, where seedlings in net pots were transplanted into covers supported by the sides of level tanks, filled nearly to the top with nutrient solution, so the bottoms of the net pots were immersed in about one half inch of nutrient solution. But what if the tank was not level? Then some of the net pots would not be immersed and the seedlings would dry up and die. An approach to a non-level tank was to float a cover with seedlings at transplanting time and then let the cover come to rest on supports in the tank after some nutrient solution had been lost by evaporation and transpiration. Then a zone of moist air would develop between the cover and solution surface. This would be called a float support system. Research on the float support hydroponic method was conducted in this high tunnel behind the smiling gardener with two heads, one of which was growing in a bottle of nutrient solution. The high tunnel was located at the Rock Springs Research Farm near State College, Pennsylvania. Let's go inside and see what all the excitement is about. Here are two tank frames with inside measurements of 50 inches wide by 24 foot long by 5 and a half inches high. The soil was leveled by screeding. Although the float support method works well with an unlevel tank, I wanted to get the tank frame to within an inch or two of level and use a water level to do this. That looks pretty level to me. Rime fabric provided a little cushioning from soil lumps and rocks. Two layers of 6 mil polyethylene were laid in the frames and filled with water before stapling the plastic to the lumber. This ensures that the plastic is supported by the soil and the tank sides. Normally I use black plastic as a tank liner, but this clear plastic was available, so that's what we used. Water was added to the tank with a garden hose. Tanks were filled with water to overflowing at the lowest point of the tank. Equal amounts of two nutrient stock solutions were added, so the nutrient solution in the tank ranged between 1.5 to 2.0 ms. Nutrient stock solutions were stored in trash containers, and special care was made to place the containers on a smooth surface because a rock under a full container could cause a leak of the expensive fertilizer solution. Stock solution A contained one pound of calcium nitrate per gallon of water, Stock solution B contained 1 pound of ChemGrow 81536 plus 0 0.6 pounds of magnesium sulfate per gallon of water. Other hydroponic fertilizers should work just fine. Your water quality may require the addition of pH up or down, but these were not needed in this experiment. Each tank had its own stirring rod and measuring beaker. There were five treatments in this experiment. They were 8, 10, and 12 centimeter diameter support pipes placed three feet apart, a continuously floating cover, and a supported cover. Here's a view from the other side of the tank. At transplanting time, the nutrient solution covered all of the pipe supports. Then, the extruded polystyrene covers come to rest on the pipes as the nutrient solution level drops and the moist air space increases as the liquid continues to drop. The 12 centimeter pipes floated in the nutrient solution, so rocks were added to weight them down. By the way, you may have noticed that I am wearing Saka Shaka gloves. Check out my YouTube on them. Now it's time to make covers for the tank. We start with one inch thick, four foot by eight foot sheets of extruded polystyrene. Do not use expanded polystyrene for floating covers because their irregular structure causes them to become waterlogged with nutrient solution. Extruded polystyrene does not become waterlogged and is much more rigid than expanded polystyrene. We want to cut each large sheet into four two foot by four foot sheets because they will be easier to handle. A utility knife is used to score the sheets. This shows how the extruded polystyrene was scored with the utility knife blade. A board is held on the score line and the side of the sheet is lifted and snapped, causing a nice clean break. Okay, I'll admit I was pretty apprehensive the first time that I tried this. It looks like the edge was scored to about one third of the depth 
and the remainder was broken by the snapping action. I marked and drilled pilot holes for the net pot openings. The two foot by four foot sheet will accommodate three rows of four plants. You may prefer a different spacing pattern. A hole saw was used to cut the net pot openings. At this point it would be beneficial to paint the top surface with white latex paint. This will increase reflectivity and increase the life of the sheets. The two foot by four foot cover has 12 openings in a staggered pattern and easily floats on the surface of the nutrient solution. Twelve extruded polystyrene covers were placed in each tank where they floated on a full tank of nutrient solution. Theoretically, there should be a one inch space on each side of an extruded polystyrene sheet, but often the space ranges between zero and two inches. The sides of the extruded polystyrene sheets are covered with dark colored lawn chair webbing to prevent algae formation in those spaces. Lettuce seedlings were grown in two inch net pots filled with peat perlite growing medium and were transplanted when they were seven to fifteen days old. Twelve heads each of Adriana semi-head lettuce, green forest romaine lettuce, and red sails leafy lettuce were grown in each treatment. This picture was taken on July 9. The tank on the left was transplanted 17 days ago, whereas the tank on the right was just transplanted earlier that day. After one week, the plants have grown noticeably. The plants on the left have now been transplanted 24 days ago. Another week has passed, and the tank on the left has almost been completely covered by foliage. Quiz time! Can you guess which lettuce plants are the red sails variety? It's July 30th, and we're going to harvest the lettuce tomorrow. Notice there are four heights of lettuce. The back treatment is supported 12 centimeters above the tank floor, followed by 10 centimeter support, then 8 centimeter support above the tank floor, and the closest treatment is floating on the remaining nutrient solution. The plants are now ready to harvest. The tank was filled with water to raise the covers above the pipe supports so we can float the lettuce down to the harvest station. Now each two foot by four foot cover is a lettuce raft. Metal brackets are placed on the far end cover, strings are attached, and the lettuce rafts are pulled to the harvest station on the other end. It is permissible to sing, float, float, float your lettuce gently down the tank while pulling the lettuce rafts. There are 12 beautiful heads of red sails leafy lettuce on this two foot by four foot raft, and they weigh around 250 grams each. Look at the beautiful white roots. The two foot by four foot raft was placed on top of a trash can, so I was able to cut the lettuce from a standing position. There's a bit of a mess that needs to be cleaned up after harvesting the lettuce. Here's a close up of the beautiful white and healthy roots. After harvesting the crop, fertilizer stock solutions were added to increase the nutrient solution strength of the whole tank to 1.5 to 2.0 ms. The rafts were cleaned and replanted and floated down the tank, so the new crop was planted several hours after harvesting the previous crop. Fast forward to August 7th and the crop in the right tank was ready to be harvested. This two foot by four foot raft of red sails leafy lettuce was placed on a trash can and is ready to be cut from a standing position. There were four more crops to harvest starting with this August 27 crop, then September 10, followed by September 28th, and finally the October 16th crop. In total, there were three continuous crops in each tank. Similar experiments were also conducted in high tunnels at the University of Hawaii Volcano Agricultural Experiment Station, which is located at an elevation of about 1,300 meters and has a cool climate. A conventional treatment where the cover was supported by the tank frame was also compared with the float support and continuous floating treatments. The average weights of all three lettuce varieties in the Penn State trials were statistically similar for all five treatments. This was surprising because we anticipated a lower weight for the continuously floating treatment. In these experiments, the time from transplanting to harvest ranged from 28 to 39 days. In the volcano trials, the average weights of the red sails leafy lettuce and the green minuet semi-head lettuce were statistically similar for all treatments 
but notice that the continuously floated treatment had the lowest weights. Also notice that the heads were much heavier than those in the Penn State trials. Now here is where it gets interesting. The fresh weights of Jericho romaine lettuce were significantly lower in the continuously floated and the float support on 8 centimeter pipe treatments. These are the treatments with the least moist air space for the roots. By the way, the extruded polystyrene sheets were only 1.25 centimeter thick in the volcano trials. Again, the weight of these lettuce heads were much greater than in the Penn State trials. The time from transplanting to harvest ranged from 40 to 52 days in the volcano trials. Volcano had a cooler climate than Penn State. It would have been prudent to harvest these trials a week earlier because tip burn developed in the final week of growth in Green Minuet and Jericho in two replicates. No pesticides were used in these trials. Mosquitoes were not a problem at either location, but they will become a nuisance in many locations. 22.5 liters of water were needed to grow a kilogram of lettuce in the Penn State trials, and that's a pretty efficient use of water. However, only 12.8 liters of water were needed to grow a kilogram of lettuce in the volcano trials, and that is a very efficient use of water. A float indicator was installed to indicate the remaining nutrient solution in the tank. Here, only 2 inches, or 5 centimeters, of nutrient solution are remaining in the tank. In the Penn State trial, 26.65 liters each of stock solutions A and B were applied to grow 1,080 plants, which produced 227 kilograms of lettuce. This corresponds to 0.7 grams of nitrogen per plant, or 3.3 grams of nitrogen per kilogram of lettuce. Some fertilizer was wasted when the tanks were drained after the last harvest. A possible method of building a float support system is to utilize a tank with sloped sides. The cover floats when the tank is full, but when the nutrient solution level decreases, the cover is supported by the now narrower sides of the tank, and a moist air zone will develop as the nutrient solution drops lower. There is a link to this article so you can read more about these float support hydroponic trials. So that's what I learned about float support hydroponics in 2007. Now it's time for me to float on out of here.